Pioneer 2v2, Caldera's refinery blue team, a bunch of Imperial Guard burst up, the Bolter effect plays a Lord General, starts off with his retinue of stormtroopers to help him out, fights in range combat, very good defense and support buffs. Alongside Commissar Vocaloid is an Inquisitor, offensive commander with great stuns and snares and crowd control in general with a little bit of support, can get some ranged weapons, this is Death Core of Krieg DLC, hence the gas masks. Red team, Tyranids, first up is Princess Pony Pants, plays a lick to alpha melee specialist that can infiltrate and disrupt with some great offense and a little bit of support too. Alongside Xenos Heresy is a big stompy hive tyrant, very durable commander, walks through cover and cannot be suppressed, very good offense, disruption and support begins with a basic synapse. Calderis then, east side natural for blue, red side have a natural on the west and contested in the middle, Lictor to Alpha versus Lord General and Inquisitor versus Hive Tyrant, some interesting matchups. Let's see what happens. Sentinel taking shots at the Hormon launch, double termigants opening for both of the Tyranid players. Look at Bolter effect with a quad guardsman build. Wow. This could turn crazy if he gets some of those war gear buffs up for the Lord General. And maybe some Vox operator support for reinforcement. If he even needs it, just get a Chimera out, I suppose. Once on cat, guardsmen are gonna struggle against those Formagons early on. Doesn't have the Sentinel to protect them, and Elixir Alpha, of course, always a threat against everyone ever. Sentinel backing away, double Termagants doing good damage. Formagons alongside this Hive Time is granting a basic synapse to all of these Termagants and Hormagons. Reducing the damage they take and giving them some suppression resistance. The Hormagons are forced off though. There you see Psychic Scream. Wow. A very, very early Psychic Scream up for the Hive Tyrant. Debuffing damage. I believe it's a 25% damage debuff on activation around the Hive Tyrant for 10 seconds. Pretty nice piece of war gear, but not quite as nice as the Trophy Rack for the War Boss and the Demonic Visage for the Chaos Lord who have smaller debuffs but is an active passive debuff. Don't have to spend any energy to activate it. Once one cap up. then. Nobody interested in capping mid, they just want to kill each other. That's what I like to see. So we're going to decapping up. the Rick point, that is annoying. Look at this wall of Lasgun fighter, that is nuts. Quad guardsmen into spotters. What is he gonna do about the Hormagons? They're gonna run right. He has Barb Strangled Warriors as well. Gonna need to keep his guardsmen spread out. Or the whole blob is gonna get suppressed and quite heavily damaged by this Barb Strangler. It's quite an expensive upgrade though. It's 25 power to get a Barb Strangler, 25 power for the Warrior Brood. So 50 power spent to get this on the field. It is a very nice weapon though. 500, 496. Pomegranate's venturing close to base. There's the spotters. There's their mortar shell, they call in off map shells. Order, also have a smoke shell that shuts down rain squads, will be useful versus these Barb Strangler warriors. And here comes Vocaloid with the assist. Where is Xenos Heresy? All kicking off, there's that Barb Strangler doing its thing, allowing the former gods to get into combat safely. Barb Strangler again hitting these guardsmen now with Vocaloid. Hormagaunts chasing them down and eating them up. They are doing very well so far. Surely he's going to give them adrenal glands so they're even more dangerous. Heavy weapon squad set up. Would have thought the Bolter effect would get one of those first, but he's gone for the spotters. 496, 496 doesn't stop him getting one as well, of course. Go for a heavy tier 1, heavy tier 1. In general, I think a good idea in the elite mod meta, especially against Tyranids. 489, 496, Tyranids, so much early pressure and numbers. You can't try and skirt around them and rush to tier 2, it usually does not work. Do we have a Barb Strangler for? We do have one, one on the way for Xenos Heresy as well, so two Barb Stranglers on the field. The higher current can get the extended carapace to charge down the heavy weapon squad. We're seeing two heavy weapon squads away from Vocaloid. Generally, a good idea against versus the Hive Tyrant, I think. Double setup teams is what I usually do. Since Raven is, I think, uh, 
not the best setup counter in the game, let's put it that way. And the Hive Tank can't really charge through two of them for 6496. He's losing a lot of health here. Still level one, of course. He needs to get close enough before he can use this psychic screen. He might well see that extended carapace. Barb Changle Warrior is going to get a stomp. Well, he faked it out. It doesn't actually have it purchased yet. 436496. There is the psychic screen. You see all of those red debuff circles and a turn to engage. There's the heavy weapon squad and he's forced off. There's the second heavy weapon squad. What is Xenos Heresy going to do to respond? Surely he's going to get the extended carapace. Might see the extended carapace and the rending talons, which is a build that I love. And one of the reasons I don't get Psychic Scream is because it's so energy intensive. 400, 496, double cap for red. Princess Pony Pants is the first to go tier 2. Looks like the Bolter effect is going to go tier 2. Just with the spotters, I think. Does he have sergeants for all of his guardsmen? He does. They're all up to nine models. Imperial Guard now trying to venture into the mid. Sentinel's going to decap a tier one vehicle that can decap points but cannot cap them. Very good synergy with these guardsmen. Lord General there. Has his stabilizers up already. Very powerful area of effect heal over time. Some people say overpowered. We'll see how it does in this game. 371496 has such great aerial effect buffs, the Lord General. Pretty nuts buffs. Scythe in Talons was that. Scythe. Knockback and suppression is a power melee weapon. Not sure how much DPS it does. Someone on the forum said it does 81 power melee DPS. That is crazy if that's true in tier 1. That is pretty outrageous. The Lictor of course, doesn't have any ranged options, doesn't have any sidearms but that is still pretty nuts if that's true I'm not sure if it is someone can confirm surely please help me out can't be true 81 DPS power melee Lord General have half of these XP bar shooting up Formagons as they run in who are munching on some guardsmen but they are forced off it is giving the Termagants the opportunity to get that damage off though. There's the artillery shell. Way back from here as you can see. A really powerful unit if used properly. Not put into harm's way. Kept right at the back. Victor Alpha using a flesh hook on a single guardsman. 371480. What is this? Power of Tyrant. Does not have the extended carapace going without it as Venom Brute up for Princess Pony Pants and a Zone Throw Park. Artillery piece for Tyranids, we'll see how it does. The Warrior Brute suppressed and now debuffed by the Smoke Shell and it does not matter how far away they get from that Smoke Shell, they're still going to be debuffed. It does work kind of strangely. It doesn't debuff the area of the brain, it debuffs all the units inside it. And then they continue to be debuffed for the duration, I believe. At least that's how it seems to work. Inquisitor has her Holy Brazier, gives her a 50 DPS power melee weapon and the Holy Pyre, which could help versus the Tyranids some area of effect damage pressure on them. Look at the Tyranids though, falling all over the map, capping everything up, double cap, and they have almost everything. The Imperial Guard players just with one natural power, this one's under attack. Is so it going to get decapped? There's the Holy Fire. Damage over time for a long last time. I think it lasts 30 seconds or something. Nice special there. There's the Stomp as well. This is good play. And Xeno's Heresy is overstaying this engagement by a long shot. Lucky not to lose another Warrior Brood model. In fact, he might. No, they get out of range of Hammer of the Witches. 304, 480. A bunker is up. Is it a repair bunker? I don't see any held regen. Oh, it's been stolen by the Tyranids. Now it's back in the Imperial Guard hands. And there is that Barb Strangler suppressing all three Imperial Guard squads that are here. They turn to engage the Formicorns now. Lord General with his sniper rifle, which gives him the fire on my target buff, increasing the range of nearby allied ranged weapons. 
Does it affect your allies? I think it only affects the Lord General's unit. It's not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure that stabilizers affect allies. And now the medical bunker is... The bunker is a medical bunker. Unless that is just the regen effect from stabilizers. 2, 3, 5, 4, 80. I don't think it is. Red team have their natural nice and safe. Blue team capping theirs back. And the game has switched. A nice pushback by the Imperial Guard. Xenos Heracle really stayed way too long and bled quite a lot there. He has a Ravener Brew, which is an odd choice at this stage in the game, I think. We'll see how he does with it. He's going for the Enhanced Muscle Coil. So obviously, in response to these heavy weapon squads, I think the Zone Threat would have been a better choice, but we'll see. There you see the fire on my target buff. Ravener Brew coming in. They're actually a power melee squad that can borrow strike. Enhanced muscle coil allows him to stay on the ground indefinitely. 2, 3, 1, 4, 6, 6. Hammer of the Witch is on the Hive Tyrant and he's forced off Ravener Brew in amongst Guardsmen. But it's going to take too long to kill them and do any meaningful damage. 2 to cap for the Imperial Guard. Now they borrow. Putting Prisra, I think, is just too close and can spot them there. Now they get up out of the ground and retreat. Big blob of stuff now for Princess Pony Pants. Does he have range synapse? He does. Lost his zone throat though. What happened? Completely missed that. Wow, that's a big loss. 2, 3, 1, 4, 4, 6. Didn't even see it. Get a shot off. He's gone tier 3. Manticore is up for Vocaloid. Heavy artillery piece. Huge range and damage potential. We need to manually target each rocket and it's very, very slow and fragile. 231, 235. Comes our Vocaloid with tons of resources. Is he going to go tier 3? Surely he is. Heavy turret put up. Or I should say dropped by the Lord General as one of his globals and he's gone for the execution upgrade. A rapid firing plasma cannon pretty much, pretty much. Every bit as awesome as that sounds as well. 2, 3, 1, 4, 2, 1. That's going to be dangerous for any Turin getting close. After his spot and a Hell Fury. Whoa, and a Manticore Strike. Awesome synergy of abilities there. That was painful for Xeno's Heresy. And that's what Turin can get sometimes. You blob up for a second and Synapse Bombs go off and you just get obliterated. Awesome play by Vocaloid. Awesome play. Had the spotter shell in there from the bolter effect as well. Where are they now? Are oh, they inside the garrison? Can they use their abilities from the garrison? Not sure. I don't think they can. Tier 3 for everyone apart from the bolter effect. Teuton cap for the Imperial Guard coming out and capping wreck points. And the Imperial Guard are starting to castle up in the mid. Of that heavy turret too heavy turrets with execution as well and a medical bunker this is going to be difficult to break sentinel with that missile launcher really think this ravena brood purchase was a bad idea by xenos heresy they're just going to bleed him dry and not break lines really much at all they'll disrupt some guards but so what they've got nine or twelve models in each squad look at this reinforcing off the bunker not going to do a whole lot any tyrant guards and zone throats or some big scary tier 3 stuff, maybe a doom of Malantite. 231367, Vocaloid, you might just see him save up for a Bane Blade here. Plus 72 power per minute for the Imperial Guard players. They have a gen on here and two full naturals. There's that fire on my target buff. He's done well, he's done surprisingly well with his quad guardsman alongside that spot up. Pony Pants maybe should have been a bit more aggressive with a melee army. Down goes the Sentinel. Manticore Strike. Storm Eagle it's called. Holy Pyre as well is there. That was pretty nasty. Elixir Alpha is down. He can support his troops pretty well with the Pheromones. Not sure if he has it. Has those Scything Talons. Which I don't think were the best choice ever to be honest. 1, 3, 3, 2. All that power melee damage pretty much wasted versus just his guardsmen. There's the Hell Fury Strike. 
easily dodge though. And look at the range when you have that fire on my target buff. Look at the range. He's not even using stormtroopers. He's just going with his guardsmen here. And exploding turn is all over. There's a storm eagle. Two, three, one, three, one, seven. But it's spotted by Princess Pony Fence, and they retreat out. Two to one. Double setup teams here. Those double turrets and the medical bunker. No wonder red team are just avoiding middle at the moment. Need to focus down the flanks, I think. Try to split up these guardsmen armies. Blue team doing very little to push down the west side though. No, no attempts to harass power at all that I've seen. No attempts to cap this VP either. That could haunt them. Could really haunt them. When they have this advantage, you need to press it as much as you can. They even have flame of guardsmen. Go and bash some power. Looks like they are. Can they hear me? 231, 291. The two to one cap for blue team. Bane Blade on the way for Vocaloid and it just makes it even more difficult for Red Team but they do have a Swarm Lord here, super unit for Interinids. Pretty fierce in the melee combat, he also supports allied Tyranids with a speed buff synapse and a reinforcement synapse so it can be incredibly dangerous alongside a large army but does really need that large army alongside it, I think. Are we going to see some LAS cannons from those heavy weapon teams? Here we see the executioner doing its thing. That area of effect damage, good versus good targets, especially heavy and super heavy infantry though I think. Swarm Lord closing into that heavy turret. The heavy turrets are actually vehicle armoured, so you can't take them down with flamers and stuff. You need anti-vehicle weapons, and they are going down very quickly to the Swarm Lord and the Venom Brood that are in there. Raid synapses up and down go both the turrets. That was an excellent push by Red, just kept caught blue of guard there I think, Manticore being chased, here's the Bane Blade though, there's the Demolisher Cannon shot, boom, almost whacking out the Termigants, they have their Ender Swarm up to 10 models, Warrior Brood still with Barb Stranglers for both players, yes and why not, suppression against all those guards on it is always going to be useful, they have an Auto Cannon for one Heavy Weapon Squad and one of them still with the Heavy Bolter here, here's that Bane Blade Super Heavy Tank, Tyranids in retreat, Manticore strike, Pogartas, crazy stuff, Swarm Lord going after a bunch of stuff in the background now, what is he up to? Chasing down stuff that was just cataclysmed by the Doom of Malantai. Sub commander for Tyranids, lots of great area of effect stuff, does not naturally regenerate energy as you see, has to use abilities to get its energy back but it's very powerful especially alongside a large army manages energy well and it's a pain in the ass and Imperial Guard perhaps struggle against it more than most they don't have heavy infantry really which is what paroxysm one of its abilities is so powerful against it's gonna hurt all those guards no doubt especially with Cataclysm that knockback and damage over time a lot of general in trouble here what is he up to? really what is he up to? Swarm Lord in his face. 229, 231. Obviously, completely forgot about this guy. Gonna die? Or is he? He's tanking like crazy here. Does eventually die. What was he looking at? Not sure. Bane Blade versus the Swarm Lord. And what's gonna win? We have double Bane Blades. Awesome. And that is a good choice versus this Doom of Malatai. Doom of Malatai can't really do barely anything versus vehicles. Its strength is combating Terminators and the super heavy walkers such as the Great and Clean One and the Avatar. Heavy Infantry doesn't want to see this thing either really, but a bunch of guards on and Bane Blade. We'll see how they do. There's the Pogatis, there's a the Toronto Formation. Should have used it on the bunker, would have one shot at it in fact. He does catch the bunker with one of the towers. Nicely done. Whoa, Manticore going off. Crazy action. Bainbread getting shots. 229-188. Swarm Lord doing really well. Leading the lines. Leading the lines well because it's so, it's so quick. Look how quick it is. Much faster than the Carnifex. One of its strengths is its speed, I think. Quite mobile for one of those super heavy walkers. There's the Leech Essence ability, which is healing up the Swarm Lord and draining health 
from these guards when it's going after the manticores on rear armor hits. Not entirely sure how much DPS the Swarm Lord does. It does heavy melee damage, obviously. But it doesn't do splash damage. It's a bit of a shame. But down goes the Manticore. I have Tyrant with the Crushing Claw and the Bonded Exoskeleton, so he has a very strong build now. Alongside the Psychic Stream as well. 229158, Swarm Lord backing off from this fight. They invade with those two Laz Cannons, that Mega Battle Cannon and the Demolisher Cannon, and two Twin Links Heavy Bolters bristling with guns. And look how many Guardsmen are on the field to support these things with repairs. Six Guardsmen squads. They could, of course, drop a repair bunker as well. Swarm Lord has not run off. He's going after this paint bait now. Toronto Formation. Is that going to hit anything? Very strangely placed Toronto Formation there. 229147. It does give a speed buff to Tyranids when it enters the field. Also give some synapse buffs. Down goes the swarm that he really should have backed that thing off when he had the chance. Was that a creeping barrage as well that I saw? Or was that a rocket run? No idea. So much stuff dying. Whoa! Big battle cannon shot, I think. The Mega Battle Cannon of the Bane Raid in Elite Mod fires automatically does quite a lot less damage. I think it was reduced from 200 to 130 for Elite Mod. But it does fire automatically, of course. 209147. I think those are the right numbers. Could be wrong. 2 to 1 cap for red. Tyranny is pushing back a lot better than I thought they'd be able to, to be honest. But that's a, he's replacing his Swarm Lord immediately. Princess Pony Pants, and that's a big blow. If he didn't lose his Swarm Lord, could, could have been getting a Carnifex right now. A Swarm Lord also for Xenos Heresy. Double Swarm Lord. Is that the, good, is that the way to go versus double Bane Blades? As Princess Pony Pants says in the chat there, they could do with a Venom Cannon Carnifex. Maybe backed up by a Zone Throat Snare. The Doom Malatai is still on the field. But apart from busting up a bunch of guardsmen, which will probably just reinforce all their losses, it can't do a whole lot here. Lehman Russ is on the field for Vocaloid. Very nice battle tank, arguably the best tank in the game. 700 hit points out the gate, can also get a couple of weapon options and the elite tank crew upgrade, which is awesome. 188140, this guy going for the executioner. One of those rapid firing plasma cannons again. Also has that front mounted las cannon, of course. 188137. That's the Swarm Lord of Xenos Heresy. Swarm Lord of Princess Pony Pants is hitting the field now ish. There we go. Elite tank crew on the way. Increasing the range, I believe, of the Lehman Russ and giving it a health buff. Call upgrade for those. 188137. What level is this type He's still level 1. Wow. How can it be level 1? So much stuff has died. That's nuts. And the Lictorup is still down. He's still level 1 also. Lord General, by contrast, is level 3, has those stabilizers, that sniper rifle. Again, we don't see any extra retinue members, which is a shame. I think it's a really cool mechanic. Level 5 Inquisitor, fully kit out for Gartas, which you've seen used very well a couple of times. The Mandate, which is an awesome accessory, buffing her speed and giving her invulnerability. And that Holy Brazier still going. Might see her swap to the Inferno Pistol, maybe. There's that Swarm Lord giving that speed buff to the Hive Tone, and that is scary to see. Look how quickly that Hive Tone is moving. The double Swarm Lord's a huge engagement here. Pergatus goes off. 188, 118. Absolutely crazy action. I'm not even going to attempt to play by play this just to see this unfold. Insane action. This is Donald War 2 right here. Doom Malatai needs to regain some energy. Swarm Lord uses its Blade Storm, a big mistake I think. It needs to use its Leech Essence. Absolutely crazy engagement. 188108 1 to 1 cap. Nobody's capped mid. Awesome push by the Tyranids. Can they take this Bane Base down? They cannot. The Swarm Lords are getting roasted. This one isn't in a way. The other one doing a lot better. Where is the other one? Here it is. Xenos Heresy making a big tactical error there and using the 
Blade Flurry or whatever it's called for the Swarm Lord really should have used Leech Essence to keep it alive. There's the Throne of Formation but it's not going to do a whole lot. You really need to follow up this global and he can't follow up because he just retreated everything. The Bane Blade of the Bolts are affecting trouble but there's a rocket run. Wow. Unbelievably both teams have pretty decent armies still in the field after all of that. Bane Blade being chased into base, but it should be okay, surely. I don't think the Swarm Lord is going to wait there and smack on it. It doesn't really have the DPS by itself to take on a super heavy vehicle, I think. 188-108. Can you use Catalyst on the Swarm Lord? I don't think you can use it on monstrous creatures. That would be awesome. Blue team have mid, it's a 2 to 1 cap. A Carnifex is on the field for Xenos Heresy, but it's an unupgraded Carnifex. Starts off as a big, bulky melee walk with a decent amount of hit points, 1350, and he's going for the Thorn back. We'll take it up to 1875 and allow it to spawn Rippers and charge rear armor hit on the Bane Blade. That is one of the big downsides of a Bane Blade. It's slow and big like Land Raiders, but unlike Land Raiders, it can take rear armor hits and suffers greatly. Look at his hits. And look at the ground here. Really could have done with having their commanders up. Lictorath has been down for ages. He's leveled to two though somehow. Lord General now decapping like Red's natural. Single cap for blue, red caps mid. And there's the one to one. And red are going to have a two to one. I thought that the Imperial Guard had the better of that big push. But it looks like perhaps not. The Bane Blades are now back at bases this one is moving out to the mid I think this one is still under pressure there is that leech essence tons and tons of heals of all these guardsmen as well 2000 hit points of vehicle armor this guy which is pretty damn tough guardsmen can't really touch it with their plasma guns quad level 4 guardsmen with plasma guns and commissars how often do you see this? That is some outrageous plasma damage. They don't really want to be shooting at a carny effect though. It's charges in there. A bit of a truncated charge. Look how much resources the bolter effect has. I guess he doesn't have the pop to get a Lehman Russ. There's so many guardsmen. 142, 89, a triple cap for the Tyranids. This is a bunker coming in. 13289, not sure what that is. There's the Pogartus. Didn't stun those warriors for some reason. That was a bit odd. There's Holy Pyre. She's fighting Formagons. How are these Formagons still alive? They have the Endless Swarm up to 10 models. Garson. Wow, with Flamers doing a good job. Level 4 Garson with Flamers. 10389. That is that. The plasma damage coming in there. Alongside the Lord General buffs as well, that's crazy. He's gone for Melted Guns now to increase their rate of fire with the, what's it called? Fight Harder. Also gives his retinue metal guns, which is awesome. Everyone floating in insane amounts of power, very little power harass in this game. 85 89, it's going down to the wire. Licked to Alpha's alive, look at him. Scythe in Talons. And deadly jump now. Corrosive claws, I think, would help. Debuffing the Bane Blade. Both Bane Blades still around. So is a Lehman Russ. Has he gone for the Vanquisher? I think he has. Gets a longer turret with the Vanquisher, and that seems pretty long. 85 80, 2 to 1 cap for blue. Our red team gonna push again. I suppose they have to, but do they have it in them to do anything? The Doom Manantine needs some energy back. Spirit Leech, the straight up energy regen ability is called. You need to target an enemy with it. You can also regain some energy with Absorb Life. 85, 67. Blue team holding firm in mid. There's the Cataclysm, knocked back and damage over time. But it's not, I don't think it's a do that all that much to level 4 Guardsmen. Warriors absolutely disintegrate. There's another rocket run. Grief. Imperial Guard team surely have this. 8553. The Swarm Lord is around for Princess Pony Pants. I'm 
sure they want a Carnifex. And that, that was the problem, I think. Just doing well and tight. Didn't do a whole lot. If he saved up for a Carnifex instead, perhaps with a Venom Cannon or something. Put the pressure on these Bane Blades. Maybe with some Zone Throw Snares. Swarm Lords headed some really good pushes. But did they really kill anything? I'm not sure. They obviously lost one of the Lehman Rusters, but I'm not sure what took it down. They're going to take down this one as well. There you go. Swarm Lords starting to pay for itself. But his Bane Blades done really well without repair bunkers as well. 83, 29. These guys are capping somehow. They seem to be stunned. Because of the chasing. She's level 9. Wow. Double Bane Blades getting chased hard. Full back Carnifex is going at them. Swarm Lord here picking up the stack on the other one. Licked her up and goes down. Not sure what he was doing chasing it with Scythian Talons. There's the Leech Essence. But the Guardsman can quite nicely repair it up. It's a score mine drop it is. 45-29. A double cap for the Tyranids. They've used this push to cap. Can they sneak this game out from under the Imperial Guard? Inquisitor using her mandate to cap. And even though she was knocked down there. She was close enough to continue capping. And she finishes the cap. Princess Pony Pants just lost his entire army pretty much. Just has level 3 Hormagaunts and a Carnifex on the way. Doom Malentai cannot level up. 13, 29, 2 ton cap of red. Can they keep the Imperial Guard at bay long enough to see this game out? He's so close. Classic Tyranid play. Losing tons but keeping that pressure up. And Cataclysm saving the day that the Tyranids take it. What an awesome 2v2. That big engagement in mid was one of the best I've seen ever. Look at the ground here. Bane Blades did well. But they just couldn't keep the VPs up. Amazing. I thought the red team were done for. I really thought they were done for. This Hive Titan is still level 1. How did he do that? Look at the commanders. Lord General level 6. That sniper rifle back on him and the stabilizers also had the melter guns level 9 inquisitor she did really really well holy brazier pergatus and the inquisitorial mandate the lictor alpha was dead most of the time he's level 3 now had side and talons and deadly jump maybe something else power time level 1 crushing claw bonded exoskeleton and psychic scream thank you for watching guys hope you enjoyed this awesome 2v2 and i'll see you next time